everyone, and anybody that didn't raise their hand, they're probably, probably it's up in their room. You all never leave home without it. How many of you have right now with you a copy in your wallet, someplace where an emergency rescue person, if you collapsed, God forbid, could access quickly, probably tucked in with your insurance card, a list of your medical conditions, your medications, doses, directions, that means OTC and prescription, allergies, and none if there aren't any, who's your health buddy, who has your living will, family history, who's your immediate emergency contact, and furthermore, maybe when's your last tetanus, pneumonia, flu shot, and I would add to that maybe a little list of your most recent preventive health services as a quick check. How many carries all that information with them? No one. No one ever answers. I, I speak to nursing groups, clinical groups, doctor groups, no, never. Virtually no one raises their hand. And I will say to you, first of all, your insurance card will get you in the door, hopefully pay the bill. And as you know, you take care of a lot of patients who don't even have insurance cards, and sometimes the door is closed, so I couldn't even say that to them. But let's assume you get into the door with that insurance card. It's your health information, that very information that I described that will save your life. And yet, even you, the role models out there, don't practice what you preach. And maybe I shouldn't have asked you to raise your hand. Maybe I should have asked you, do your most immediate loved one, your parent, someone in your family who has a lot of medical problems, because you're all thinking, oh, I'm healthy, I've, nothing's wrong with me. I would argue that that's not true. We all have something to write on that little card. Do we do that for our, our loved ones? So we did nothing else but imagine a future where every patient, and I, I do this when I talk to patients, and I give those cards out. I, you, I have an example at your desk, but you can develop your own. Uh, don't wait for the electronic chip or the smart card or the whatever. That's not going to work in an emergency. That doesn't work today. We need to empower people by really having that information at their fingertips. The brown bag thing is nice, but it doesn't always work. My parents, and, and my mother was a former nurse, my father, they live in York, Pennsylvania, and I get an emergency call now, it was almost 10 years ago. My dad had just had bypass surgery, and I get the call from my mother, who's learning that Marcus Welby is maybe sick at that point. So she calls me two hours away, her former nurse, doctor, assertive daughter, and says, Marie, your dad can't breathe, something's wrong with him. I said, Mom, don't call me, get him to the emergency room. And then, oops, I remember, I put on my nursing hat, and now I'm going to say my pharmacy hat, put on that hat and said, Mom, put all his medicine in a brown bag and get him to the hospital. Now, I should have said call 911, but thank God he made it because I forgot. I was nervous too. You're, you know, as a patient or caregiver, you're vulnerable. You make mistakes. All right, they get to the emergency room. I get in the car because I know that they need an advocate, a health buddy. So two hours later, show up, see that he has his heart arrhythmia, looks like ditch toxicity. Said to the doctor, it looks like he's ditch toxic. And the doctor says, no, can't be. You know, your mom brought all his medicine, and here it is. You know, she, they were all lined up there on the little bedside thing in the emergency room. Guess what? The ditch wasn't there. And oh, your hospital had an EMR, but did it show up there? No, because the cardiologist that had seen him two weeks before didn't know that his creatinine was high, didn't know that he couldn't take the full dose of DIG, didn't have a way to communicate to the rest of the practitioners about the DIG. My dad was the only voice, the only constant in that entire complicated system that had saved his life, bypass and back and forth to the sur surgeries, you name it, he had it. But in the end, he could have simply, he could have died simply from his failure to have taken that patient power school course and see that he had his emergency health information with him at all times. Well, guess what? He's actually in New York Hospital right now, but he doesn't go anywhere without that card. In fact, they've added more drugs to his regimen. He goes, Marie, I'm going to need to update my card. I, don't, I think I need like two cards because I'm on so many different things. But he is empowered. And I can't tell you, I mean, you, you've, you saw those testimonies from your patients. Give patients a voice. Put their picture on it. Then that makes it even more personal. And don't, I say to doctors, don't let a patient, you know, don't give a prescription to someone unless you have their information. Pharmacists, don't interact with patients. You need, we need to go back and forth putting their feet to the fire and we, we deliver on that promise. We can't just tell patients to do something and then not follow up and make it important. So important. And I, I don't know who better is positioned to get patients to figure this out, the idea of carrying this information. After Katrina, I was doing a lot of interviews because what happened was 
No one had their emergency health information. They literally left, as you know, without anything. And doctors who were interviewed said, if I only had a list of their medications, that would have helped me know what kind of their chronic conditions were. Patients didn't know. I mean, I had a patient once, and it, well, it wasn't a patient, a person at the airport who was saying to me, oh, I don't need to carry that card, an older man in a bookstore. He said, I do something better than carrying a card. I said, oh, you do? What? He digs into his pocket, pulls out all his pills. And you know, he didn't have that purple pill in there, and so otherwise, I didn't know what he was taking. I said, do you think that your clinicians are going to know what's going on in an emergency? So we need to get people to understand. And really, they're, speaking of literacy, everyone needs to identify somebody in their family, their health buddy, who helps them fill this out and sees that this information is with them. So arguably, if you did nothing else but ran a campaign, just show it, just know it. You don't get a prescription. You don't get a whatever until we know that we're all on the same page. S research has shown that patients, even what they bring in on the brown bag doesn't correlate as well as you might think with what they have at home. It wasn't until people actually went into the homes and saw what was sitting on that kitchen counter or in the middle of the table that they really understood what patients were taking.